Okay, here we go. This is a bit more of an in-depth look at the engine itself. Again, sorry for quality, cell phone camera, that's all I got. I got a splurge and buy myself an actual good camera. So here is the right side of the 582 or the exhaust side. This is a gray head 582, so a model 99. The difference between the blue head and the gray head is the blue head has a bypass. So it comes out of here, goes around and goes back into the engine. And that helps warm up the engine a little bit more quickly during the colder months. It's a snowmobile feature, I believe, that they discovered worked very well on the airplanes as well for the pilots who didn't want to spend 10 to 12 minutes on the ground in the winter warming up their engine. I don't have a problem doing that. And the, uh, the price was right on this one, so that's why I decided to go with the gray head. The other big difference is the blue head has a ceramic seal for the water pump, which is back in behind here, I believe. And the, uh, the, the seal that's in here is prone to erosion with the silicate that's in the coolant. So to counter that, we simply use coolant that doesn't have silicate in it, and that's Dexcool, I believe it's called, and it's orange. So we can see we've got some coolant in the coolant overflow reservoir there. Those are the two big differences between the blue head and the gray head. As long as you're willing to warm up your engine adequately, the gray head is every bit as good as a blue head, and some say even a little bit better um, due to the fact that if the thermostat fails, they normally fail sort of half shut, half open. And if the thermostat fails on a gray head, you still get half of your coolant going through your radiator and it will cool, uh, continue to cool your engine. With a blue head, up to 90% of it bypasses the radiator if the thermostat fails in the half closed position. And so you immediately begin to overheat and you need to put it down into a field if you want to avoid damage to the engine. So those are just sort of some things that I learned at the, about the gray head versus the blue head. This is just sort of a, a nice close up look at the engine and the installation. The motor mounts were custom built by Scott of Palmer Fabrications. And the radiator mount again by Scott. And I pointed out in the last video the nifty uh, ability to raise it and lower it depending on the temperature, depending on how much airflow I want. Now yesterday was about the hottest I'll probably operate the aircraft. It was quite warm yesterday. Felt like th over 30 degrees and we were able to keep it cool. So I probably won't end up actually utilizing that feature, but you never know. Maybe I'll end up in Arizona one day and I'll have to put it up in order to get more airflow through. <laughs> the radiator cap and hose here um, came off of a Mazda, full-size Mazda van. A 96, I think. I didn't even know they had Mazda made full-size vans. But anyway, that's where that little thing came from, and that's Dave found that in the local scrapyard and it looked like it was going to work perfectly for our application and it did the radiator itself is out of a Volkswagen Rabbit it seems to be doing the job quite nicely the propeller is the same it's a two blade 64 inch warp drive and instead of nine degrees of pitch that the 503 had it is 14 degrees of pitch currently. It's not pitched. Uh, I haven't confirmed that the pitch is correct yet because I haven't gotten to full throttle to determine what my static RPM is going to be at full throttle. It should be 6,300 RPM is where I'm going to be aiming for, but I can't do that till the engine's properly broken in. So I'm just going to continue to leave it where it is. It's not over revving, so I'm happy with it where it's at for now, and then we'll uh, adjust that. We'll fine tune it if we need to. The gearbox on the 503 was the other way around and it sort of pushed right around here. And so it, it did actually kind of put a rotational moment on the engine and it would actually rotate up a little bit under full power because of the, uh, the rubber engine mounts. We couldn't, where we, the 503 sits higher, this part of the 503 is smaller and it could sit higher without impacting the root tube here. The 582, because this is flared quite a bit more, we had to lower it. So instead of the engine, this, this part of the engine mount being about here, 
we had to drop it two inches. And when we dropped that two inches with the gearbox inverted the way it was, the propeller was dangerously close to the boom tube. So we had to rotate the gearbox around for propeller clearance. Uh, and what that did was give us lots of clearance. Now I could actually go another three inches on the propeller safely. If I don't have the money to buy a new propeller right now. But what it also did was it changed the thrust line on the engine so that it's right in line with the engine mount. And so we're not going to get that rotational moment anymore. It's just going to be uh, a straight push. Now it is a very slightly higher thrust uh, angle, I guess, compared to the vertical center of gravity. So I may notice a little bit more tendency for the nose to pitch down when I do uh, increase the throttle. But it's off by, I don't know, two inches in the grand scheme of things, so I probably won't even notice a difference. Got some custom exhaust brackets, again, built by Scott of Palmer Fabrications. This is actually the exhaust off of the Chinook, and you can see we, again, Scott had to cut it open and re-weld it to get all of the bits of the 582 that were in there when the 582 on the Chinook blew up. So. That was fun. Dual Bing 54 carbs on this side with a single uh, air filter. Uh, dual ignition and of course, as you saw in the last video, pull start. So I like the pull start, it's simple. It doesn't add any weight by, uh, you know, by putting an electric motor on to, to start the engine. Don't have to worry about a bigger battery and solenoids and all kinds of other relays and switches and keys and stuff. This is just flick the ignition switch on, pull her till she starts, nice and easy. No priming system, we have chokes for cold weather starting. And what I will do is I will just simply pop the bowls off, which you can do just by pulling this wire retainer out of the way. Pop the bowl off, bring it over here to my fuel tank. And I'll just open the drain cock here, fill up the bowl if it needs it. Close it back up. I can then inspect the bowl, make sure there's no debris in it. So that's a nice added bonus there. Stick it back on the carb. And now I'm primed and I don't have extra primer connections that I have to worry about leaking. So yeah, I like to keep it nice and simple. Down under here, we have the, let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. We have the oil injection pump and that seems to be working. My lines filled up after I bled them. So that was bled properly and they filled up and it's consuming oil. So it's consuming oil and I am currently mixed at 50, 50 to one with my fuel. So I've got lots and lots of oil in this engine right now, twice as much as it needs, but that's never a bad thing for the break-in procedure. So it'll be nice and lubricated. I'm just gonna step over the struts here, give you another wider angle of the engine I guess and then I'll just come back over to this side where there's better light and I guess that's pretty much it that's just sort of a quick walk around of the new engine its mounting system and setup and uh, and yeah I don't know if I can yeah we can kind of get an all right look at the dash so I have I've simplified my dash I took out the rate of climb indicator that I had here in the past and I had to add a dial, so my water temperature is there, and now I have my EGTs, CHTs, and a new RPM gauge. This one's not one of these needle ones, it's actually a really nice color-coded designed for the Rotax. So, yeah, seems to be working good. Anyhow, I guess that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this quick update of uh, what's been going on with the new installation, and we should get to flying videos soon. I am going to finish breaking in the engine today. But I didn't bring my cameras for the struts or my head cam. Well, I, my head cam is here, but it's out of batteries. I forgot to take it home last night and charge it. So I have no camera here. So the break-in procedure for the rest of today will be um, without you watching, unfortunately. And it is really bright. So I'm going to stop pointing the camera at myself and I'll go back to this. So I, I, that's pretty much the end of the video anyway. So I uh, hope you enjoyed watching. Stay tuned. There will be flying videos to come very shortly. Say goodbye, Matthew. <laughs> goodbye, Matthew. I'm such a numpty. <laughs>